Mornings at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A mother forced to shoot a burglar to protect her children and her home now has her neighbors concerned about the safety of their own families. Coming up, what they are now saying about this deadly incident. Let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Literally just a sheet of humidity when you walk out the door. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for a full forecast in just a bit. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday, April 30th. Ooh, how are you doing today? Oh my gosh, so hot. <laughs> How's the hair? It melting. Melting. Makeup's melting. I was telling Max I woke up this morning and I was like, <gasps> I was like, the AC is blasting. Mm -hmm. And the AC probably just looked at me and was like, I'm trying my best. Doing what I can. So how are we looking out here? Oh my gosh, you guys hit it on the head. The humidity <laughs> is going to be the biggest story for us all weekend long. Warm and humid in San Antonio. And in fact, it's going to be hard for us to see much sunshine until the afternoon because of the high humidity out there. Let's take a look out there with temperatures. It is warm out there this morning. 73 degrees, 74 in Hondo, 72 New Braunfels, 76 in Del Rio, closer uh, to the metro area at 72 in Bolverde, 72 in Holotus, and 72 in Converse. But again, the humidity, a big story this weekend for us. One thing I want to uh, mention, though, is looking at your weekend, uh, really there is a small chance for a few showers today, an isolated storm. We're going to be talking about the future cast in just a bit in the, in the full forecast. But tomorrow looking very similar to today. A few morning sprinkles, and it isn't until Sunday night that we have a fairly decent chance for some storms. So a lot to talk about in the uh, forecast for this weekend. The big takeaway, how humid it's going to be, how warm it's going to be. And we'll talk about the chance for isolated showers in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. All right, late breaking news this morning. We now know multiple firefighters at a scene on Montana and Cherry Street right near the Alamo Dome. Jonathan Goto joins us live from the scene. Jonathan, what do you know so far? Good morning, guys. Yeah, I'm here on the corner of South Cherry and DeShield, right across from the Alamo. Busy morning for San Antonio Fire Department's uh, here attempting to uh, put out the flames at this house. We know San Antonio firefighters were called out shortly after 5 o'clock to this abandoned structure, fully engulfed in flames. They say they were able to quickly put out those flames. No exceptional challenges here this morning. But it's interesting to mention that this abandoned structure, this abandoned house right next door, was also engulfed in flames about a month ago. So this is a familiar, a familiar area for firefighters here this morning. Of course, uh, investigators on scene determining the cause of this fire. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. And top stories this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is hoping you can help them locate a teenage girl who hasn't been seen for almost a week. Just take a look at your screen. This is 15-year-old Hazel Contreras. She was last seen on Monday around 4 p.m. at a school in the 11,000 block of Calibra Road. She's described as being 5 foot 4, weighing about 125 pounds with brown eyes, pink orangish hair. She was last seen wearing a black tank top and gray pants. Anyone with any information is asked to call the BCSO. That number also on your screen, 210-335-6000. Well, police investigating a break-in that turned into a deadly shooting at a home on the city's southeast side. This is what we know right now. Police tell us a woman shot and killed a man who tried to break into her home late last night on Cashmere Place. That's near Kellis Avenue. So police on the scene telling us a man made his way through a park to the homeowner's backyard. He was allegedly trying to get into the home through the back door. That's when officers say the homeowner, a woman home with her three children, had a weapon, shot, and killed the suspect. I feel for the people that live in that house because I do the fear and the adrenaline that was going in. That's why we moved in parks right next door. Go over there and play. And that's that's the idea. But bad things happen. So this happened Thursday night and at last check that homeowner not facing any charges. The medical examiner not yet identifying the suspect. We do expect more information throughout the morning. So make sure to stay with us on air and online for those details. Well, the woman accused of hiring a police officer to knock off her boyfriend's sister took the stand in her own defense yesterday in her solicitation capital murder trial. Angelica Navarro de Paz says she was forced by death threats and potential harm to her family to plot the murder. Navarro de Paz had a relationship with a confidential informant named Katie. 
She says Katie was the one who forced her to call the alleged hitman who turned out to be an undercover police officer. She always carries a gun in her back and she would tell me, get on, get on. And if you don't get on, she would take out her gun, a big one, and shoot me. She told me, if you fail me this time, I'm going to kill your children and your husband. The trial continues Monday morning. If convicted, Navarro de Paz could face life in prison. Two more charges being tacked onto a man accused of killing a Bear County Sheriff's canine. 38 year old Matthew Mereles currently awaiting trial for killing the canine three years ago after a chase and a standoff on a highway. According to Bear County jail records, Mereles is now charged in two separate indictments with possession of a deadly weapon in a penal institution. Investigators say back in February, Mereles carried a metal shank into the Bear County Adult Detention Center. The new charges are third degree felonies. They carry up to 10 years in prison, but he still doesn't know his original punishment. Now to the pandemic, thousands of children under the age of five still unvaccinated, and that's primarily because they are not yet eligible. But there is word that that could change in just a few weeks. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is set to consider emergency use authorization for Moderna's vaccine for young children <clears throat> in June. Patty Santos explains young children in this particular age group are still at risk. Moderna says its vaccine is ready for FDA and CDC approval. It was safe and there were no reported cases of serious adverse events. The company's studies show its vaccine for kids provides some protection. It was 51% effective at preventing infections among kids six months to two years old and 37% effective in two to six year olds. The vaccine could come as COVID continues to spread even among young children. Seven in one day, so it is definitely still out there, especially in the younger population who does not have availability to have a vaccine yet. Local pediatric nurse Bethany Smith with Little Spurs Pediatric Urgent Care says some parents are on the fence about what to do and are asking questions. Kids, parents will come in with younger kids and older kids that may not have gotten the vaccine yet and asking, is the vaccine safe for my child? What are the side effects, if any? And would you give it to your child? Which is the most common questions that we get asked mm -hmm. about the vaccine. We asked our case at social media followers, if the emergency authorization is approved for younger kids, would they consider it for their children? And the overwhelming number don't see it as a need anymore. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, a gunfight between police and a man at a Wisconsin hotel forces other people staying there to run for safety. This happened in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Police were responding to calls about a man yelling profanities at someone outside of his hotel room door. When they approached his room, police say the man threatened to kill them. They say they heard two gunshots. An officer returned fire. Hotel guests were evacuated and workers at a nearby business were also told to stay inside a fire truck was also called in and several people had to use a ladder to escape their rooms. The man eventually surrendered. Time now, 608, 73 degrees out. San Antonio firefighters are emphasizing fire safety as a city has seen an increase in calls involving our elderly population. What the department is doing to make sure this age group stays safe. And terrifying situation in the Midwest last night. Tornadoes. Take a look at this. We're going to have the dramatic videos and all that destruction and devastation they left behind. It's already 73 degrees at 608 this Feels morning. so much hotter, though. Oh, my gosh, y'all. The humidity. Oh, it's killing me this morning. <laughs> Sarah Spivey will have our weekend forecast when we come back. Well, cleanup and recovering going on right now in Andover, Kansas, after multiple tornadoes touched down last night. Terrifying situation. The state's governor declaring a state of disaster emergency. So take a look. This is some of the video. This is one of the twisters, a massive one passing through parts of Andover. Now, this is a suburb of Wichita. Families there say much of the city still without power. Damages include homes, city hall, high school, and the YMCA. So far, no immediate reports of any injuries. But back here at home, 73 degrees, humid. Let's see, can we get back here at home? Yeah. That video well, is I want to yeah. show the mm -hmm. that video is very frightening. Yeah. And that's a low precipitation uh, supercell that developed that tornado uh, and that's why you can see very clearly that funnel the second it 
makes contact with the ground. It just sucks up uh, anything and everything in its path. Uh, here, there you go. You can see very clearly, again, sometimes with tornadoes, what you'll have is you'll have rain wrapped around those tornadoes. But in this case, very clear funnel uh, all across uh, that, that view there. There's been so many pictures of this tornado because of the low precipitation, the time of day that it happened as well. Uh, so again, we'll be waiting to hear more on the rating of this tornado eventually and whether or not there were any injuries from that tornado. Here's the big system that created that tornado. You'll notice that we are on the tail end of that system. All of the energy up to the north where that low pressure system is, we're on uh, the tail end of that here in Texas and we really don't anticipate much if any rain this weekend. All right, there is an off chance for an isolated shower or storm both today and Sunday night, but the big story here for us is just going to be how humid it's going to be this weekend. Outside right now, you can see cloudy skies, 73 degrees, south southeast winds at 10 miles per hour. So it is a little breezy. Those south southeast winds bringing up that humidity and dew points are at the absolute top of the dew point scale near 70 degrees. So it is oppressively humid outside. You feel it. In some cases, you may even see it this this morning in the form of some sprinkles uh, and potentially even some some light mist patchy mist in areas uh, and as we take a wider view here of the state you can see a very clear cutoff from the humid air and the dry air dry in the panhandle humid Dallas Fort Worth Junction and then points south uh, towards San Antonio this is a cold front that is not going to make it to San Antonio, all right? We're not gonna see the dry air from this system. Instead, this is what's going to be bringing us an isolated shower or two. Again, here's the wide view uh, of that system that I just showed you with all of the energy and the severe weather and healthy rain closer to that low. Here in, in Texas and specifically for San Antonio, let me walk you through the high res future cast. Right around 10 to about 1 p.m., there is a possibility for an isolated, very light rain shower, really sprinkles when you think about it. So it should not interrupt your Saturday plans outside. You just may notice, oh, hey, got a little raindrop on me. And then as we head into the afternoon hours, that front is going to stall to our north in the hill country, and there is an off chance that it could spark a stray storm. Now, if a stray storm does develop, it could become strong or severe. Notice that this particular forecast model puts that stray storm closer to the Austin metro area, but that could be closer to the San Antonio metro area too. Now, our chance for rain is only 10 to 20 percent. So again, don't bank on the rain today, bank on the humidity. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. You know, we're gonna be cloudy all throughout the morning. Temperatures just really hovering in the low to mid 70s. As we head into the lunch hour, that's when we have a 20% chance for a shower, a light rain shower or a sprinkle. We'll be close to 80 degrees. And then into the afternoon, that's when we'll see a bit of sun. And there's that 10% chance for a stray storm. Uh, but again, off chance. We're really going to be pretty warm today with high temperature right around 88 degrees in San Antonio. We'll have southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, not too windy. It'll be 90 at Stinson, 90 in Divine, 89 in Hondo, 84 in Kerrville, 91 in Pleasanton, 90 in Floresville, 85 in Canyon Lake, and 84 in Bulverde. So, an isolated shower possible during the day today and then tomorrow we'll have some light mist in the morning hours. But Sunday night we do have a 30% chance for some storms. Storms out to the west near Del Rio could make it to San Antonio Sunday night and coming up in the forecast. I'll walk you through the future cast for tomorrow. That'll come up in the next half hour. Just know that we'll be on alert Sunday night into Monday to see if those storms have enough oomph to make it to San Antonio. Otherwise, we really do not have a good chance for rain in the forecast. My friends, it's just going to be warm and humid over the next several days. High temperatures near 90 morning lows near 70 a fairly 
uniform forecast other than the off chance for a stray shower storm here and there. That humid mist that you talked about, I definitely had it on my, wind my windshield. I was like, is it raining? I was like, oh my gosh, that's just gross humidity. Yeah, <laughs> you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Just about 618, 73 degrees out. Well, still ahead, wages for American workers rose more than 4% over the past year. Why many still feel they're losing out on hard-earned money. Plus details on a special event focusing on helping people navigate and survive fire. We're going to explain. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, three, seven, five, fireball one, daily four, eight, seven, seven, four, fireball two. Cash five, 14, 20, 21, 27, 29. Here we go. Mega millions, nine, 11, 34, 49, 66, big number 15. Multiplier two. two. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. Fire safety, it's something we talk about a lot and it was the topic at a meeting focused on helping people survive fire events, specifically home fires. So at that meeting between members of the San Antonio Fire Department and some local seniors, they met at a community center on the city southwest side yesterday. Firefighters spoke to seniors about protecting themselves from fires. It's a timely subject considering both San Antonio and the U.S. are seeing an uptick in fires. What we're focused on here is making sure that, that our residents have smoke detectors, that they know and have a clear way out of their home if their house does catch on fire. Joe Arrington with the fire department says the meeting goes beyond educating seniors. They're hoping that those who attended will share the information they learned with their neighbors and that it will help prevent future flames. Time now, 622, 73 degrees out. And next, why Apple's return to office policy is drawing criticism for some employees. Good morning and welcome back. So, do you feel like you got a pay cut this year? Well, in real terms, you probably did, even if you think you got a raise. And you can thank inflation for that. Wages for American workers, they technically rose 4.5% over the last year. That's the most we've seen wages go up in the last two decades. Here's the thing, though. It just doesn't feel like it because inflation has made almost everything more expensive. It's actually reduced the value of the dollar. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reporting just yesterday that real compensation, which is adjusted for inflation, actually fell 3.7% for workers across the board. Well, Apple's return to office policy is drawing criticism from some employees. A tech giant's pilot program calls for having much of its corporate workforce back in the building at least three times per week is expected to go into effect the end of May. But a group calling itself quote, Apple together, <laughs> wants more flexibility from working from home. In a letter, organizers say they are requesting the ability to, for individuals to work out hybrid arrangements with their managers. So far, there's been no comment from Apple on the letter. I feel like three times a week is not bad. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Um, I also think that more companies should adopt the hybrid approach I instead mean, of just one way or the other. Yeah, three times a week. I mean, 60%. We're here. All, we're here. Five times a week. <laughs> there you go. All right, time now, 627, 73 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. We're learning more about the first known American to be killed in combat while fighting alongside Ukrainian troops battling Russia. Plus, we have that late breaking news. Firefighters monitoring the remains of the flames. City's east side, Jonathan Cote, joining us live with an update. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 6.30 this morning, Saturday, April 30th. Thank you so much for Good joining morning. us. You doing all right? I'm hanging in there. Yeah, it's I'm not gonna lie, like, I know the AC is on full blast here <laughs> at KSAT, but I'm still kind of sweating. It's so, a little gross. So, behind the scenes, Sarah's always the one who says, it's too cold in here. I know, I make I make everyone else miserable because <laughs> I have to have it, like, at 75, but I, I am really hot this morning. I can understand why, too, because it is humid out there and it's warm, too. Here's a look at temperatures around San Antonio and the KSAT 12 viewing area. We usually see a morning low right around 62 this time of year. We're 10 degrees warmer than that. It's 73 in Hondo, 75 in Pleasanton, 75 in Eagle Pass, 69 in Kerrville, and 73 in Kennedy. Metro view here. Let's take a look out towards Seguin where it's 71. It's 73 in Hondo. 
Hondo, 75 in Castroville, 72 in Bulverde, and 70 in Bernie. We are starting to see a little bit of mist out there, especially up in the hill country near Kerrville. Visibility is down to five miles, and I would not be surprised if you run into some patchy mist, patchy, patchy drizzle out there this morning. The humidity is just thick. Now today we're going to have a chance for an isolated shower uh, and a high temperature near 90 degrees. Tomorrow a very similar day to today. A few morning sprinkles, but by far the biggest story this weekend is not the chance for rain, but the humidity. The humidity will stay high all weekend long. Now late Sunday night there is a potential for a few storms. I'll show you the future cast for that and we'll talk about uh, just how warm it's going to be across the KSAT 12 view area coming up in a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, students at Johnson High School, they are pushing for changes after two of their classmates were killed in a crash at the start of the year. So back on January 9th, Gabriel Juarez and Ziv Houdani, they were both killed in a two vehicle crash on Bulverde Road just outside the high school. Now the school's smart driving club is calling for action. Members want better signage and better traffic lights in the area where their classmates were killed. I think it was just something that was felt throughout the school. We have, you know, 600 kids that pull out of the back parking lot every day. Now the county controls that area. However, District 9 Councilman John Kurd says council is paving the way for an overhead traffic light. It should be installed by the next school year. Well, if you have a sweet tooth, listen up. There's a recall. HEB's bakeries recalling their two bite brownies. These are super popular at HEB because they could have some metal fragments in them. The grocer announced the recall yesterday after receiving two different complaints. The brownies are either sold by themselves, like you see there in that box, or with this cookie party brownie bite tray. According to HEB, an outside supplier made those brownies, so anyone who has them should throw them out or bring them to the store to get a refund. Port San Antonio is one of the technology hubs here in the Alamo City. Over the last year plus, we've seen the port build a state-of-the-art facility, and it is almost officially open. May 2nd is the first official concert being held at the new Tech Port Center. That is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., President and CEO of Port San Antonio, Jim Pershbach, set to join us live. We're going to be talking about a lot, talking about what makes this brand new arena special, what the city can expect, and what the future of technology here in San Antonio looks like. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for all the answers. Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine, the first known American civilian fighter died there. Now it comes as the battle rages on in eastern Ukraine. But despite the constant shelling, a senior U.S. defense official says Russia's war has not gone according to plan. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest. The first known American to be killed in combat while fighting alongside Ukrainian troops has been identified. Former U.S. Marine Willie Joseph Cancel, his wife confirming his death to ABC News, saying in a statement he went there wanting to help people. He had always felt that that was his main mission in life, adding my husband was very brave and a hero. The president calling Cancel's death very sad and his administration echoing this warning to Americans. We know people want to help, um, but we uh, do encourage Americans to find other ways to do so rather than traveling to uh, rather than traveling to Ukraine to fight there. It is a war zone. That message from the White House comes as Russia ramps up attacks in eastern and southern Ukraine. But according to a senior U.S. defense official, Russia's war is still not going according to plans, and they're now having trouble with their offensive in the east and are behind schedule at least several days. They are already a weaker military. They have suffered thousands of casualties. They have lost airplanes. They have lost tanks. Uh, they have certainly lost battles. Um, and, um, and they are certainly a weaker, a weaker military than they were 64 days ago. With the Russian offensive slowed, the Kremlin resorting to nuclear threats with the Pentagon urging them to tone it down. We urge Russia uh, to stop uh, escalating the rhetoric uh, uh, with respect to nuclear weapons and do the right thing. Is end the war today. Still, the Pentagon saying they do not assess that there is a threat of the use of nuclear weapons and more evidence of Putin's unrelenting fury. Ukrainian officials saying today that another mass grave had been discovered outside Bucha.
Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. The Alamo City is receive, uh, receiving recognition for its leadership during the COVID-19 pandemic. Texas Biomed awarded San Antonio with the inaugural 2022 Stand for Science Award. The award is for supporting science and public health measures during the pandemic. At yesterday's ceremony, Mayor Ron Nirenberg thanked the city and county officials for working together to get the best plan in place to respond to COVID-19. It's the last special flavor allowed in U.S. cigarettes. So the FDA now proposing a complete ban on menthol in cigarettes and cigars. Health advocates say this major shift could save tens of thousands of lives. Mandy Gaither has a story. In a milestone decision, the FDA moves to make menthol a thing of the past. It has the potential literally to save tens of thousands of lives each year. More than 18 million people smoke menthols in the U.S. That's about 36 percent of all smokers, according to the FDA. It disproportionately impacts the African-American population, low-income individuals, and the LGBTQ community, precisely because the tobacco industry has targeted these communities. Matthew Myers with the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids says this proposal would eliminate those disparities. It will bring down smoking rates, but most importantly, it'll bring down lung cancer and heart disease rates in these communities. While the CDC says smoking rates are at an all-time low in the U.S., the agency says smoking is still the number one cause of preventable death, disease, and disability, killing more than 480,000 Americans every year. In a statement, the NAACP calls the proposal a huge win for equity, justice, and public health concerns. An FDA ban on menthol and flavored cigars won't go into effect right away. The next step will be a comment period. Any comments would be reviewed before a rule could be finalized. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. So the FDA says it still cannot speculate on when this rule could be finalized. Well, public health experts believe that tobacco companies will also try to stop the ban by suing the agency. Now to the latest on that breaking news of the top of the hour, that fire that broke out in the city's east side near the Alamo Dome. Firefighters were called out to this abandoned house at Montana and Cherry Street. Flames could be seen coming from that from the roof through the attic area of the home. Crews were have been able to put out those flames right now. They are investigating the cause so far. No injuries have been reported. Time now just about 640 73 degrees out. All right. It's Saturday, oh, so yes. that means, is that chicken fried steak? Yes, it is. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. We'll give you a preview of Texas Eats in just a bit. All right, we're also going to have the latest on animal care services. They're running out of space, and that's because they are now taking care of so many local dogs. We're going to explain in just a bit. 60, I'm sorry. 73. It is 73 degrees. <laughs> it's hot. It's hard to get anyone's hopes up at 639. You can see that blanket of humidity across the Alamo City. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So local rescues and animal care services say they are running out of space and that's because they have so many dogs in their care. And they say it's part of an owner surrender movement at God Dogs Rescue. The kennels at home base are full and so are their fosters. Right now they have over 500 dogs total in their care. Rescuers Julianne Mark Banks and Debbie Davis say this is something they've never seen before. Owners giving up their dogs at an exponential rate. It's happening at Animal Care Services as well as the number of dogs in their care rises. Now Bethany with ACS says the number of placement opportunities is falling. They're coming up with now creative solutions. Trying to get people to hold on to their animals, solving their problems so that they're not having to owner surrender. Asking citizens who find strays to hold on to them, try and find the owners. So ACS also conducted an extensive survey across the community asking people what they think. The results are still being collected and in a few months ACS will be ready to make that recommendation. It's so sad. I know. Aww. You know, taking taking care of a dog is a big responsibility. Mm. I have two of them. But I do encourage people to foster because yep. if you don't know if you're ready or not, you can foster and at the same time you're helping out um, our local shelters too. That's true. 
Absolutely. Right. Good advice there, Sarah. Uh, you know, it is humid outside, guys. Yeah. It is so muggy, and that is the story for the day today. And really, honestly, for this weekend, just how humid it's going to be all weekend long. Still, though, there is an off chance for some rain, so let's talk about it. Outside right now, you can see the clouds there. Wow, what a beautiful view. You can really tell my sarcasm here. <laughs> 73 south southeast winds at 10 miles per hour socked into cloud cover this morning and we won't really see the sun until the afternoon outside right now. It's 73 in Yavaldi, 75 in Pleasanton, 69 in Kerrville, 72 New Braunfels, 76 in Del Rio. It's 70 in Junction and 78 in Catula. Those clouds are back and they are back in a big way. Again, we won't be able to shake them really until this afternoon. It's 72 in Rio Medina, 72 in Bulverde, and 73 in Hondo. You may even see out there a little bit of patchy mist, all because the humidity is very high. Dew points are in the upper 60s and low 70s, so that humidity, you can feel it. Feels like you're walking in a wall of water, and uh, in some cases, you might be able to see it in the form of some mist as well. Now, looking at the bigger picture, there is a big, dynamic, dynamic upper level low. You can see all of the rain moving in a counterclockwise fashion around this low. And this is the same system that produced several tornadoes across Kansas. A and we are on the tail end of this system. I mean, notice that there's really not any rain around this cold front in Texas. And so as this front sags to the south, we may see an isolated shower today. But really, the biggest story is going to be how this Gulf moisture is just ramping up across Texas and making it very humid out there. But let's talk about that slight chance for rain today. Looking at the future cast again, a, a few sprinkles, light rain showers possible around lunch. This will not really interrupt any kind of outdoor plans. So uh, enjoy your day outside if you can stand the humidity. Now as we head into the later afternoon hours, there's an off chance that a storm may develop along that front uh, as that front stalls to our north. This particular model puts it up near Austin, but it could be anywhere across the KSAT 12 viewing area. But the chance for rain uh, and a chance for a strong storm is very low, only 10%. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we'll start off with morning clouds, perhaps some morning drizzle as well. And then into the evening hours, our eyes are going to be out to the west near Del Rio and the Rio Grande because a dry line is going to spark off a complex of storms all the way up to San Angelo. They may have enough oomph to make it to San Antonio in the overnight hours, Sunday night into Monday. But as this particular model shows, it shows most of the rain missing San Antonio. So the chance for rain is measly uh, all weekend long. Sunday night into Monday, we'll be watching carefully for that complex of storms. But really, honestly, the chance is only about 30%. So not great as far as uh, rain chances go. But if you have plans outdoors this weekend, you really uh, are in for a fairly good week if you can weekend if you can stand the humidity. So looking at the case at 12 hour forecast socked into cloud cover this morning we will be in the 70s all morning long. And then as we head closer to the lunch hour, a few peaks of sunshine temperatures near 80 south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, a chance for a stray shower or so. And then into the afternoon, only a 10% chance for a storm, but we'll be keeping an eye on things. Otherwise, it's going to be warm near 90 degrees. 88 for the high. It's going to feel like 90 at least because of the high humidity. Morning sprinkles tomorrow, as I just mentioned, a fairly quiet day on Sunday. Then watching those storms out west Sunday night into Monday. Not a great chance, though, in the San Antonio metro area. Hopefully we'll get a little rain. I'm hoping for it, but it's it's not looking like a good soaking event for us. Otherwise, it's going to be humid in the week ahead. Temperature is close to 90 degrees every day. Another shot at a few isolated storms, especially on Thursday. But that's the best we can do right now, Sarah and Max. It was measly chances of rain. Measly. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 649, 73 degrees out. Still ahead, we are talking steak in yes. today's episode of Texas Eats. We're going to preview a preview. So good. My mouth is watering. All right, let's take a live look out at the roadways, I-35 and Space Center. Not a lot of people out and about this morning, but if you do have plans for later this morning, make sure to be safe, drive smart.
Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, three seven five, Fireball one, Daily four, eight seven seven four, Fireball two. And your cash five, 14, 20, 21, 27, 29. Mega Millions, did you play? No, because I didn't win the 437 million, so I'm a little upset. Well, you showed up to work, so we're all winning here. <laughs> Mega Millions, 9, 11, 34, 49, 66, big number 15, Mega Plier 2. Good luck, we'll be right back. Well, today on Texas Eats at 10 a.m., David Elder takes to the Hill Country steakhouse. All right, so they're serving up some, some familiar dishes. I'm so hungry just seeing the preview, so yes. here you go. Take a look. You know, you are such a renowned chef. You have so many different ideas, and right in front of us, we have a, a display of some of the top items that you have on the menu out here, but the one that's sitting right in front of me grabbed my attention right off the bat. <laughs> a chicken fried ribeye covered in lobster. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, I mean, how can you beat that? That sounds over the top. I don't think you top. can beat that. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's about as good as it gets right there. Uh, talk to me about the, the preparation for this, though. What goes in? I see there's a little bit of, I mean, there's a lot of extra things going on here besides just the lobster on top. Sure. So we start off with a certified Angus beef ribeye that we pound out. Um, after that, we take our lobster tails and we pull the meat out of the shells. And we cook it real slow. We butter poach it so it's just perfectly tender just super flavorful and succulent. Mix that in with a little bit of our uh, cream gravy, uh, as well as some uh, roasted hatched chilies and Ooh. a little bit of bacon as well, because bacon makes everything better. This is comfort food, right? And you're just executing it on a different level. I mean, but a lot of these elements, especially with like what's in front of me, I mean, you've chicken fried a ribeye. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> I need, I need the chicken fried steak. Yes. The best was he basically saying there are different levels to this, and that was the top level. Do you put your gravy on top of your chicken fried steak, or are you no. like a side guy? Side guy, because oh, I like no, the no. organization. Smothered. No, I like no, no, because no, I like the dip, because it, it, else it's just too much. It's You're just, no fun. You gotta <laughs> stay organized. Time now, just about 6:55, 73 degrees out. Here's coming up on GMA. Coming up on GMA, the crisis in Ukraine ongoing. The Biden administration warning Americans not to travel to the country after the death of an American fighter as Russia's defense ministry claims responsibility for a deadly attack on an apartment building in Ukraine's capital of Kyiv. And Russia launches new strikes in the region from land and sea. We have team coverage just outside of Kyiv where Ukrainian forces are mounting a fierce defense. Plus, with interest rates soaring and the stock market taking another plunge, we're taking a look at the economy and sharing money tips and moves you need to make right now. And that failed pilot swap stunt now being investigated. One of the pilots now speaking out what he is sharing about his role and responsibility in the failed trick coming up. It's all here on GMA. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Busy scene for firefighters attempting to put out a fire at this home located on the city's east side. We know San Antonio firefighters were called out shortly after five o'clock this morning to the corner of South Cherry and Dash Hill. That's near the Alamo Dome. The abandoned home was fully engulfed upon arrival. Firefighters investigating the cause of this fire. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Stepping outside right now, it's uh, humid and warm. It's 73 degrees. That's 10 degrees above the average temperature we usually see this time of year and time of day. Uh, it's uh, 72 in Converse and 75 in Castroville. Today, patchy drizzle out there this morning. These clouds are going to be stubborn. We will see some sun in the afternoon. I can't rule out an isolated sprinkle or light rain shower around noon, but really don't cancel your plans because it's going to be uh, just a humid and fairly quiet day. Southeast winds 5 to 10. Tomorrow morning we'll have sprinkles and another day very similar to today. Morning clouds, peaks of afternoon sun near 90. And then overnight Sunday into Monday, we'll be looking out west to see if storms can make it to San Antonio. But as you can see, the chance is pretty small, only 30%. Warm and humid in the week ahead. Thank you, Sarah. Well, coming up at 8 a.m., our Jonathan Cotto will be live uh, with a group that is working to help out the Salvation Army to raise money for their emergency shelter. That's right. So take a break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, tornadoes touched down in parts of Kansas overnight. We'll have an update on that damage. 
Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. More than 100 volunteers are joining forces today and all for a good cause here at the Salvation Army. We'll have more details about what's taking place here this morning coming up on GMSA. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, we have drizzle, we have mist, we have humidity, and we have 72 degrees. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full weekend forecast. But for now, good morning. 8 o'clock this Saturday, April 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Um, it's cold in here now. It's okay, This is so your we, fault. <laughs> we made it really cold in the studio because... We, like it was a <laughs> joint decision here. No, because when I walked in this morning, mm -hmm. I just couldn't... I couldn't cool down, Sarah, because just walking outside, it, even it, with the humidity, and I feel like humidity just seeping into it's like my house this morning yeah. and the studio this morning. Absolutely. It is much warmer than average out there right now, all because of the humidity. And we're starting to see areas of patchy mist and drizzle develop around the city. Take a look outside right now. The humidity is obviously going to be the biggest weather story this weekend for us. You can see on the horizon there, it is difficult to see because of the humidity. There are areas of mist and drizzle. Visibility is down to five miles at the airport because of the mist and drizzle. Southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. If you have to head out this morning, you may encounter a couple of slick spots on the road. This is 90 uh, at Couples, and you can see uh, that the highway there is just a little slick from some mist and from some uh, drizzle. Pardon me, this is 90 at 35. And, and you can see, although the drizzle and mist is difficult to detect on the radar, when you look at the visibility, you can really see where the drizzle and mist is, especially out near Hondo. Castroville points to the west, pretty much west of uh, 281 there. Visibility less than five miles. Visibility six miles in New Braunfels. So the morning mist and drizzle will be with us just for the morning, but the humidity is going to stick around all weekend long. Today, there's also a 20% chance for an isolated shower. I'll walk you through the future cast there. Otherwise, it's going to be warm. It, temperatures are going to climb to near 90 degrees this afternoon. And then Sunday night is our best chance for rain over the next 48 hours, but even then, it's only a measly 30%. We'll talk more about that and, of course, the humidity. Oh, the humidity out there today in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters responding to flames at a home on the city's east side this morning. So it all happened near the intersection of South Cherry Street in Montana. It's just east of the Alamo Dome. So firefighters on the scene telling us they found the home filled with flames. They also found that the structure was abandoned. Firefighters fought the blaze early this morning. They were able to keep that fire from spreading to surrounding homes. They say the house, the structure is a complete loss. Right now, arson investigators on the scene trying to figure out how this all started. More trouble for the man accused of killing a canine from the Bear County Sheriff's Office three years ago. According to the Bear County Jail Records, 38-year-old Matthew Mireles is now charged in two separate indictments with possession of a deadly weapon in a penal institu institution. Investigate investigators say back in February, Mireles carried a metal shank into the Bear County Adult Detention Center. The new charges are third-degree felonies. They carry up to 10 years in prison. But Mirella still doesn't know his original punishment. He's still awaiting trial for the killing of a police service animal. Well, this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office asking for your help in search of a missing teenager. 15-year-old Hazel Contreras was last seen on Monday around 4 p.m. at a school in the 11,000 block of Calabria. Now, she's described 5 feet 4 inches tall, weighing about 125 pounds, brown eyes, pink orange hair, last seen wearing a blank black tank top, and at gray pants, anyone with any information, you are asked to help out. Call BCSO at that number, 210-335-6000. In your morning headlines, Governor Greg Abbott says he's taking half a billion dollars from other state agencies to fund Operation Lone Star. This comes just three weeks after state military officials said the operation needed money to keep it going. Operation Lone Star aims to fight crime and illegal immigration along the border. Governor Abbott says about $210 million will come from the Health and Human Services Commission. Another $160 million will come out of the Department of Public Safety's budget. The rest will come from the Department of Criminal Justice, State Health Services, and Juvenile Justice Department. Multiple tornadoes touching down in Kansas last night, prompting the state's governor to declare a state of disaster emergency. 
Take a look. This is one of the twisters, a massive one passing through parts of Andover, a suburb of Wichita, Kansas. Now, residents say a lot of the city still without power. There are reports of damage and damage to homes. Andover City Hall, a high school and the city's YMCA. City officials in Andover say there are as many as 900 buildings in the tornado's path. Right now, though, still no immediate reports of injuries. Well, happening today, families and volunteers are meeting this morning, helping to improve the Salvation Army's emergency family shelter. Our Jonathan Goto is there live with how they're doing just that. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Volunteers are already starting to trickle in, and the event is uh, just a couple hours before starting. But with me is Brad, Public Relations Manager for the Salvation Army. Brad, what can we expect uh, in the next couple of hours? In the next couple of hours, uh, we're very fortunate. We've got uh, more than 100 employees from Security Service Federal Credit Union here today. It's part of their volunteer extravaganza, and they chose the Salvation Army. And we're going to be in the courtyard area primarily for our emergency family shelter. The playground back there needs some work, uh, needs some painting work. Hopefully the weather will hold up so we can do that. Uh, we're going to be doing some remulching work and um, some other landscaping in the back. Also, we're going to be working with the National uh, Association letter carriers to prepare some bags for an upcoming food drive too so some volunteers will be working on that as well now um, talk to me a little bit about the timing and the collaboration with security services gathering this volunteer extravaganza uh, I'm sure it couldn't have come at a better time considering what's needed here at, at Salvation Army oh yeah absolutely uh, volunteers are a big part of what we do here we couldn't do what we do without them and to have more than a hundred capable great volunteers enthusiastic here makes a big difference so we'll be able to meet a lot of needs today and some much needed renovations Awesome. Thank you so much, Brad, for joining us this morning. There you have it, folks. More than 100 volunteers gathering today to do some very important work for a very important organization, and that's the Salvation Army. We're going to be talking with those volunteers and, of course, security services to learn a little bit more on that effort in the next coming hour. Max, Sarah. Thank Jonathan you, Jonathan. Content. I was telling Max, I've, I've toured that facility, mm -hmm. and they do phenomenal work there at the Salvation Army Emergency Shelter. All right, we're going to be checking back in with Jonathan around 830. Time now, 807, 72 degrees now. Max, it was a big night for a former San Antonian. Yes, actually a couple of them. Uh, we're going to explain. We have the NFL draft. We had night one on Thursday, night two yesterday, and we got more draft picks to come throughout the weekend. And up next, animal care services and local rescues have too many dogs and not enough space right now. How they're hoping to solve the problem. And yeah, let's take a quick live look out at the Alamo City, 72 degrees. What you say, a blanket of humidity? It's a blanket of it. Love it. All right. A heavy blanket, a weighted blanket. Weighted blanket of humidity. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Local rescues and animal care services, they are running out of space for dogs in their care. They say it's part of an owner surrender movement at God's Dogs Rescue and the kennels at home base are full and they say so are their fosters. So right now they have over 500 dogs total in their care. Rescuers Julianne Marbanks and Debbie Davis say this is something they've never seen before. Owners giving up dogs at an exponential rate. It's happening in animal care services as well as the number of dogs in their care rises. Bethany Colonies with ACS says the number of placement opportunities is falling. They're coming up with creative solutions, so they're also asking citizens to, who find strays to hold on to them and try to find the owners. I know it, it's heartbreaking when you see a stray out in the street, but I think the best option is just, you know, if you're out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I already have two dogs, but I have taken in a couple. I foster them, and then you help find them a forever home. That's kind of just the way to go at this point. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, turn to the weather. Speaking of outside, 72, blanket of humidity, Sarah. Yeah, blanket of humidity that is actually visible in many places in the form of mist and drizzle out there this morning. Uh, and this will happen tomorrow, too, so get used to the high humidity. That's the big story, big story this weekend for us. Let's take a look outside with live cam. You can see that humidity there on the horizon. 
Roads are just a touch damp. There's no real ponding on the roads or anything like that. We're not dealing with substantial rain. This isn't going to help us out with the drought. It's just a nuisance. And if you have to be out and about this morning, know that you're going to be dealing with this uh, light mist and drizzle. Southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. High humidity. Let's take a look at the visibility. You know, we can't really see mist and drizzle on the radar all that much. It's very, very light. But what you can see is when you look at the visibility, where the heaviest mist and drizzle is, and that's where the visibility is the lowest. So Port SA, Castroville, Hondo, visibility all less than five miles there on the west side of town. Out toward New Braunfels, visibility down to six miles. By the way, perfect visibility is 10 miles. Visibility down to seven at Bernie Stage. So a lot of areas around the San Antonio Metro uh, dealing with some of that fog, that mist, that drizzle, and it's all because of this. Very high humidity. Dew points are near 70 degrees right now in San Antonio. We're at 70 degrees. That's that's the top of the scale. That's how high humidity can go. But if you look a little to the north, what you'll see is some dry air sinking across parts of North Texas. Now this is along a weak cold front, and this is why this weak cold front is why we have an off chance for a shower or even a storm this afternoon. But again, the big story is this guy right here, how humid it's going to be, because whatever rain, if we get any rain, is not really going to help us out as far as the drought is concerned. And this is the system as a whole. You can see really that the big area of energy with a lot of rainfall is near that low pressure system across the Midwest. We're on the tail end of that, and there's really only a few light showers being generated along that front. It really shouldn't ruin any kind of outdoor plans unless you need to do painting. <laughs> That's the only thing I would think of that uh, this uh, moisture would really become an issue for. Yeah, and, and again, we'll be seeing a couple of light rain showers out there through about lunch and then these stubborn clouds are going to clear somewhat this afternoon. We'll have mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies as we head into the later afternoon uh, hours in this front stalls to our north. I can't rule out that one or two storms may develop. This particular model sends a storm out toward the Austin metro area, a particularly strong storm. But again, notice how isolated that is. So the chance for rain in San Antonio is really not all that good. The biggest weather story is going to be how humid it's going to be and how warm it's going to be. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast, staying in the 70s this morning, again with some mist, drizzle, and even into the lunch hour, an isolated shower. Uh, temperatures should be near 80 degrees by about lunch. And then as we see a little bit of sun this afternoon, that's when we'll see temperatures warm up to near 90 degrees in the upper 80s. And it's going to be a mild evening with temperatures in in the 70s and 80s. Uh, elsewhere, we'll be looking at highs near 90 like Divine, Petite, Floresville, Seguin, New Braunfels, low to mid 80s though up in the hill country. Our rain chances do tick up Sunday night, but again, it's only a 30% chance for showers and storms coming up in the next half hour. We're going to talk more about that chance for storms Sunday night into Monday. Otherwise, tomorrow is going to look very similar to today. Humid morning sprinkles, morning drizzle, and a little bit of afternoon sun. In the week ahead, high temperatures near 90, another chance for rain Thursday, but again, chance for rain right now is only about 30%. So not looking great. Even the rain and mist we're getting now is, is unimportant, not helping us out. Max and Sarah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Just about 817, 72 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA, we got some draft updates. Oh yeah, we got uh, an alum from Sarah Spivey's university, Texas A&M, a, &M, a Big draft pick headed to Pittsburgh. We're going to have a recap of some of the best picks from last night in Vegas. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning and welcome back and congratulations to everyone who has gotten drafted and their families. Speaking of which, former Judson and Texas Aggie, Texas A&M Aggie, defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal, now officially a Pittsburgh Steeler. The Steelers using the 84th pick in the draft last night, picking DeMarvin, who decided to stay in San Antonio to share the moment with the people who mean most to him. Now, Leal started 12 games his junior season at A&M, finishing eight sacks, 12 tackles for loss. According to the Steelers' website, DeMarvin saying he was aware the Steelers had an interest in him after an interaction with the defensive line coach, Carl Dunn, 
Brown Bar during the pre-draft process. The Steelers defensive coordinator commenting, saying Leal is really versatile and able to play multiple positions across the line. Another possibility for Leal going into last night was a probable number 56 pick for the Cowboys, but Cowboys passing on that opportunity. As for being a Steeler, Leal commented last night that he is genuinely excited to be part of Pittsburgh's football team. And also congratulations in order for JT Woods, a Steel High School alum and former Baylor Bear safety. Also drafted last night by the Los Angeles Chargers. Third round of the draft, Woods burst onto the scene this past year with six interceptions. It's actually tied for the most in FBS. One interception in the Big 12 championship game for the Baylor Bears. Came out with two more picks in the Sugar Bowl helping Baylor defeat Ole Miss. And of course, we have Tariq Woolen and Sincere McCormick from UTSA. Just a few of our local UTSA players waiting to hear their name in the draft, and I'm sure they will. Oh, I'm yeah. definitely sure they will. All right, so time now, 821, 72 degrees out. Well, actor Liam ne uh, Neeson is taking on a new role in a film that's now in theaters this weekend. We'll get a special preview of Memory next. Good morning and welcome back. So Liam Neeson bringing his very particular set of skills to a new film. TNN's Rick Damagella has a preview of the movie you can catch at the box office this weekend. I'm the bad man. I have been for a long time. Liam Neeson plays a professional with a certain set of skills hampered by the onset of Alzheimer's in memory. Anything else I can do for you? The room number again? It's on the key holder. Ah. He's been a hitman taking a bad guys for 40 years he knows the end is right near and he wants to do something by way of redemption i can't keep doing your job for you who is this you're too slow to make them pay what they did to children they're not doing anything about it doing the research for him as regards uh, reading, watching documentaries on dementia, Alzheimer's, reading some books on it was incredibly interesting. It's an awful affliction to have it. The retainer for your services is $10 million. Monica Bellucci sought a challenge in playing the villain. She's described as a natural sociopath, uh, bright, charming, but at the same time cold and manipulative. And uh, for some aspects, she's a monster, and in others, she's a human being. And playing this duality is what interests me. And with this role, I wanted to break the mold in which I have been cast many times in my life. We all have to die. What's important is what you do before you go. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. How are we feeling? Yeah. I saw Batman. I really liked it. I still haven't seen that one yet. Okay, it's three hours, so you gotta prepare yourself. Oh gosh, these are long movies. <laughs> Just 827, 72 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA why the White House is now bracing for a potential showdown between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin at this year's G20 summit. And who can forget, it is Saturday, so what does that mean, Sarah? Texas Eve. And we have chicken fried steak this morning. We're gonna give you a full preview. Mouth-watering food in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. 6.30 this morning, April 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Hey, what is it, April showers bring May flowers? Yeah, but we didn't get a lot of April showers. This week we got a little bit. A little bit. But at Sarah, really not enough for what we need. Right, and even what's happening right now out there is just some patchy mist and drizzle in areas. It's not going to amount to much. In fact, just checked at the airport. Nada has fallen at the airport, but maybe a couple of hundredths here and there could happen from the light mist and drizzle out there. Let's take a look outside right now. Look at the horizon. Very difficult to see the horizon because uh, there is mist and drizzle falling and near the airport where this camera is 71 degrees winds from the south at seven miles per hour visibility down to three miles from that mist dew points are in the 70s it is very humid and on some spots across uh, Tex across San Antonio, rather, we are seeing uh, a few slick spots from the mist and drizzle. Otherwise, though, traffic is uh, flowing smoothly this morning. We cannot really see mist and drizzle on the radar. It's a little too light. Uh, and 
because of that, I want us to look instead at the visibility. And you can see that visibility is down to less than two miles in Castroville from uh, the mist, drizzle, and fog. About three miles at the airport, down to five in Bernie, down to four in Port SA, down to two miles in Hondo. So. Other than the mist and drizzle though out there right now, it's really not going to be all that bad of a day. It is going to be humid though. If you're planning on heading out to Cornival in uh, Lotus, it is going to be very humid. At 11 a.m. when gates open, cloudy, humid, a few sprinkles out there like what we're seeing right now. As we head into the afternoon, we'll see some peaks of sunshine. It's going to be warm with a high in the mid to upper 80s. And then tonight, temperatures are going to fall into the low 80s. We just got the pollen count in. I'll show you that in just a few minutes and also we do have an off chance for some isolated showers and storms and not only today but also tomorrow night too so we'll talk about that coming up in a bit sarah max thank you sarah happening today volunteers are meeting this morning to help improve the salvation army's emergency family shelter that's right jonathan koto joining us live there now good morning jonathan Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. Yes, things are already full uh, and in full effect here at the uh, Salvation Army Center. Folks grabbing a bite to eat before we put them to work, right, Brandy? Absolutely. We've got a lot of events planned today, so we're super excited that everybody's here. This is our part of our volunteer extravaganza. We do this twice a year with our volunteer corps through Security Service, Federal Credit Union. Uh, we have our employees, family members, friends, and we're hoping to beautify the, uh, their playground project out there and really spruce it up a bit. We, we've got mulch, painting. Obviously, the weather is playing a little bit into this, so we'll, hopefully it'll dry out out there and we can get everything accomplished. Super cool, Brandy. So you do this twice a year. Talk to me a little bit about the effort that goes behind organizing uh, activities like this. I know it's such an important uh, uh, thing that you do here. We know the Salvation Army houses close to 130 folks on, a given, on any given night. Um, so how does it feel to be able to contribute that, that, that effort here this morning? Absolutely. So at Security Service, we really believe in giving back to the community and providing different experiences for our employees where they can be a part of the community. We work with a lot of different nonprofits throughout the year. And so we have, through our volunteer corps, we have someone who manages that on a daily basis. And we provide different opportunities for our employees and their family members almost every weekend. It can be anything from working at the Salvation Army to food bank or uh, working out in parks and, and beautiful the parks. It just depends. So uh, we do a lot of different service projects and we want them to find something that they feel good about. It's something that you, we can't teach. You have to learn. And we feel it's so incredibly important for them to bring their children and to teach them that from a very young age to learn that you get so much more out of giving back to someone than um, you know you could ever imagine. And so that's what we hope they take from today is, is how important it is to uh, make a difference and and have an impact on your community. And I think they will. Thank you so much, Brandy. There you have it, folks. We're going to continue to hang out here with the volunteers. We'll bring you the latest on their efforts as they launched this volunteer work at 9 o'clock. Back to you, Max and Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is in serious condition after a shooting on the city's east side overnight. This is what we know right now. Officers responding to the 500 block of West Martin Street last night early this morning, just before 5 a.m., and they received a call for help. They say a victim actually drove to that location, saying that he was shot two times in the abdomen. Officers say he would not provide a specific location where he was shot, but he was taken to the hospital for treatment. He will be questioned by detectives later this morning. Well, time to check the cupboard. HEB's bakery recalling two bite brownies because they say the brownies could have metal fragments. Uh, the grocer announcing the recall after receiving two different complaints. The brownies either sold by themselves or with the cookie and brownie bite party tray. HEB says an outside supplier made the brownies. Anyone who has them should throw them away or take them to the store to get a refund. Well, Texas is one step closer to adopting a new, more involved teacher certification test. So during the pandemic, resignations from teachers were at an all time high. Now the state says the new exam could help them keep them in the classrooms longer. A state board has now voted in favor of requiring the new certification exam in an effort to better prepare new teachers. The test would require teachers to submit answers to essay questions and provide a sample lesson plan. It would also require a 15 minute video of themselves teaching in a classroom and a report on 
their students' progress. The State Board of Education must still approve the test before it's officially adopted. The board is expected to consider the matter in June. Now to the latest in Ukraine, relentless Russian shelling ramping up along the Ukrainian border and the calm around the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, shattered by new missile strikes. This is the White House is bracing for a potential showdown between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin at this year's G20 summit in Indonesia. CNN's Steve Nance has the latest. A team of CNN journalists diving for cover in Ukraine as explosives strike dangerously close and bullets whiz over their heads. Afraid? <laughs> After a few relatively quiet weeks in the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, missile strikes have now turned residential buildings to ruins. This wall saved my life, she says, otherwise it would have been the end. Halfway across the globe, the atrocities being unleashed by Russian President Vladimir Putin's forces in Ukraine, having an emotional effect on the Pentagon spokesman. It's difficult to look at the... Sorry. It's difficult to look at some of the images and imagine that any well-thinking serious mature leader would do that <clears throat> so i can't talk to his psychology but uh, i think we can all speak to his depravity now with the g20 summit on the horizon the white house is conveying to the host country indonesia that russia shouldn't be allowed to participate it's inappropriate i think for the entire international community uh, to keep treating russia uh, as if things are normal because it's not there's a lot that could happen between now and then, but we certainly haven't seen an indication to date uh, of Russia's plan to participate in uh, diplomatic talks constructively. I'm Steve Nannis reporting. Well, for the first time, the U.S. intelligence community is disclosing just how often it searched the electronic data of Americans last year. So according to this latest report, the FBI conducted about 3.4 million warrantless searches on Americans' electronic data in 2021. That includes searching an individual's email address, name, and other identifiers. The searches were done using the 1978 Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. The law actually allows agencies to conduct such searches if there is a valid, predicated foreign internet inter intelligence purpose. Now, the report notes nearly two million of those searches were related to a possible cyber threat from Russia. Lawyers representing families of Sandy Hook victims are asking a judge to dismiss the bankruptcy filing of InfraWars founder Alex Jones. They say the filing was done, quote, in bad faith. As you may know, families sued Jones over his past claims that the 2012 mass shooting at the elementary school was fake. Jones has since changed his stance, acknowledging the shooting was real. A judge will hear arguments on May 27th. Well, Port San Antonio, one of the technology hubs of the Alamo City, and over the last year plus, we've seen the port build a state-of-the-art facility, the new center. Now, May 2nd is the official concert. It's going to be held at the new tech port center, and that is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., President and CEO of Port San Antonio, Jim Pershbach, joining us live. We're set to talk about what makes this new arena so special, what the city can expect, and we're also going to be talking about the future of technology here in San Antonio. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com, then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for all the answers. Time now, just about 840, 72 degrees out. Well, still ahead, Texas Ooh. Eats getting a whole bunch of food ready Let's just go. for you. Is that a cheesesteak? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> have a preview. Max is excited. I wish you would have brought us cheesesteaks. That would be nice. I know. All right, taking a live look out there. 72 degrees out there now. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. Also, happy birthday. A San Antonio woman celebrating a moment that many of us, well, I wouldn't even imagine, 107 years old. Happy birthday, Irene Wilson. She looks great. Happy birthday, Miss Irene. Her birthday was yesterday. She was born April 29th, 1915. A lot has happened since then. To she say went the through least. two pandemics. Yes, two world wars. Most of us read about it in history books. She actually lived it. One of, the, one of the big things is the telephone, because we used to, I lived in a farm, 
and we either have to get up on a stool and crank, you know, and now these kids can't have my carrot in their pocket. <laughs> really. Oh my gosh, I, I love it. Irene still has a few years to go if she wants to set a record right now. A French nun is believed to be the oldest human at 118 years old. Miss Irene, you are fantastic. So I think the secret is you just got to live on a farm. Got to live on a farm. That's what she said. Well, I was reading a study that gardening and being outside, okay. you know, has some effects on longevity. Wow. All right. I don't want to be outside today. Yeah, so. it's a little <laughs> icky out there right now with the mist and drizzle, Sarah. And, you know, we are seeing elevated molds and oak out there today. Now, this mist and drizzle may help those oak numbers go down, but it's definitely going to make the mold numbers go up. Take a look at today's pollen count. We've got molds moderate at 860, oak moderate at 420, pecan and grass are low. This is the story outside right now. We are seeing mist and drizzle all around San Antonio. Although, looking at this image, I'm finally able to see the horizon there. So it does look like this lower cloud deck is lifting a little bit. And we're seeing some improvement to the visibility in spots. But yes, there are areas of mist and drizzle. It's 71 degrees outside, south winds at about 10 miles per hour. It's a fairly warm morning too. Temperatures in the 70s, about 10 degrees warmer than seasonably average for us this time of year. Take a look to the north. You see how those skies are clearing? That's a cool front. It's going to struggle to move through San Antonio today, but it is going to keep around a chance for some isolated showers throughout the day today. Socked into cloud cover at 73 in Castroville, 76 in at Stinson, 75 in New Braunfels, it's 68 in Bernie Stage Airfield. But this is the big story this weekend. The humidity going to stay high. It's thick out there. The humidity is thick out there. We are seeing mist and drizzle in spots. The humidity is not going to go anywhere. So even as we see a little bit of sun this afternoon, it's going to stay humid. Although drizzle and mist is difficult to detect on the radar, we can see that out toward the west, toward Castroville, Port S.A., Hondo. That's where drizzle and mist is the thickest because visibility is the lowest. Uh, visibility down to three miles at the airport, down to six in New Braunfels. Let's take a wider view here. You can see that very thin line of showers that's pushing south along that front. But the main area of energy and most of the rain is centered around this area of low pressure. And this is actually the same storm system that that unfortunately brought a lot of tornadoes to Kansas. Now, severe weather is unlikely here in San Antonio today. And again, we'll really just mainly get that Gulf of Mexico moisture and some of those showers. Uh, and there is an off chance for some storms late tonight, uh, late this afternoon into tonight. We'll talk about that through the future cast here. Again, a couple of light showers possible as we see this front push south through lunch. Then as we head into the afternoon, we'll see clearing skies and off chance for a storm. This particular model keeps them up north toward Austin, but we got included in the forecast, although you should really just bank on the humidity uh, and no important rain for many of us this is not going to be a drought bus but late tonight there could be a couple of isolated storms up in the hill country. Then starting your day tomorrow for your Sunday, we're going to have morning mist and drizzle like right now. As we head into Sunday night, we'll be looking out west because a complex of storms could develop along a dry line. This complex of thunderstorms may have enough oomph to make it to San Antonio or they may fall apart. We'll be watching that very carefully. The chance for rain overnight Sunday into Monday is only only 30%. As for your KSAT 12 hour forecast, some drizzle here through about 10 o'clock. And then as we head into noon, an isolated shower as that front approaches. It's still going to be warm though. We're going to be near 80 degrees right around lunch, seeing a few peaks of sun into the afternoon. And that's what will allow us to warm up in the mid to upper 80s, right around 88 for the high here in San Antonio today. It's going to be a mild evening too. Temperatures will only be in the 70s. Again, we'll be watching the radar carefully but really only expecting isolated rainfall today in the form of showers or in the afternoon and evening in the form of storms. Morning sprinkles and drizzle early tomorrow too. And then we'll be watching out west Sunday night into Monday. Again, only a 30% chance in the metro area. Better chances out west where those storms will originate. Looking into the week, it's going to be warm. We're going to be near 90 degrees. Uh, on Thursday, and we have a small chance for storms on Thursday as well. Sarah and Max.
Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Just about 850, 72 degrees out. Well, ready for some good old cheesesteak. Yes. We'll take a trip Always. down the road to Corpus Christi. Oh, shouts. First look at this week's Texas Eats. That's next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Saturday, that means we have Texas Eats starting at 10 a.m. David Elder takes us to an authentic Philly cheesesteak shop in Corpus Christi. Did you grow up in Philly, or is it like family from Philly? My father grew up in South Philly. I grew up in South Jersey, which is literally right over the Wall Women Bridge. Why Corpus? As you can see from the from the pictures on the wall, my boys, all we do is fish. Yeah. And uh, Texas is just it's a it's a, one of the greatest places to fish. And this is what you got out here. This is what you're representing. You, it's a taste of Philly down here in Corpus. This right here, though, this is like the original. This is what you can expect, right? So what gets loaded into the sandwich? So a, a cheesesteak home is meat and cheese. What you do to it is what you do to it. <laughs> so when they say like an original Philly cheesesteak, there's really no such thing other because some, some places you can get provolone, some places do the Wiz, some places do American. Uh, from Philly to Jersey, you've always got the provolone with the grilled onions, okay? That's with or without onions. We came up with the Philly special sandwich, and that's the provolone, that's the Philly cheese on top mixed together with the peppers and onions and mushrooms. That's the, we call that the Beast from the East special. Philly cheesesteak, onions, peppers, provolone. There you go. Okay. That is. This is a man from Philly. 854, 72 degrees out. All right, we're going to take a look outside with the roads at Transguide. So far, looks like things are going pretty smooth out there. Good morning and welcome back. So there's a lot going on in and around the Alamo City throughout the month of May. Do you want to do your thing? It's gonna be May. Nice. <laughs> so we got you covered right now on KSAT.com. We have a full list of all the family friendly fun to do. Obviously we have Mother's Day, Memorial Day coming up soon. Great time to head outdoors. You can find a full list right now just at KSAT.com. Time now 857, 72 degrees out. Well, just ahead at 9 coming up on GMSA, a judge in the Ghislaine Maxwell case has denied a motion to have her sex trafficking convictions dropped. We'll tell you why. And stargazers have a big chance to experience a big celestial event. It involves Jupiter, Venus. We got a lot to talk about. That's beautiful. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto and I'm hanging out here at the Salvation Army Family Emergency Shelter where in a couple of minutes all these volunteers are going to be gearing up, putting on their gloves and getting ready to do some hard work here at the shelter. We'll tell you exactly what they'll be doing coming up on GMSA. Investigators looking into another house fire on the city's east side. At least 16 fire units responding. We have that story. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, like Sarah Spivey just said, not a great day to be outside doing that work. 72 degrees now. We had humidity, drizzle. It is a fun morning. Good morning. Yeah. 9 a.m. April 30th. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. So describe the, the walk to work. How'd you feel? The oh, blanket of humidity. It was awful. Yeah. I like it just it just hits you. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a what did I say earlier? A weighted a weighted blanket, just a weighted blanket of humidity <laughs> over the skyline, Sarah. That's I, it. And it's gross. damp. It's damp out there for many folks uh, this morning. And in fact, as you take a look outside right now, you can see the damp conditions there on 410 and uh, mist and drizzle is out there. It's all unimportant rain. Unfortunately, just a nuisance out there, not amounting to much, if any at all, maybe a hundredth of an inch of rain here and there, but that's it. It's 72 degrees. Winds are from the south at about 10 miles per hour. Visibility has improved at the airport. It's now up to eight miles. Earlier visibility was down to three miles at the airport, but you can see that we're still dealing with the mist uh, out at Port SA. Visibility is down to five miles, down to less than two miles. In Castroville, visibility down to seven miles at Bernie Sage Airfield and down to six in New Braunfels. Showing you the satellite right now, and you can see just how socked into cloud cover we are. We have areas of patchy mist and drizzle out there. As we take a wider view, notice there is a line of light rain showers to our north. This is actually the cold front that's going to be stalling across the hill country today. It is kicking off some very light rain showers.
showers. And so because of that, we're going to carry a chance for light rain showers through about the lunch hour. It's going to stay cloudy until then too, but into the afternoon we will have some sun and so it is going to get warm this afternoon. High temperature in the mid to upper 80s southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Coming up, I'll show you the future cast. We'll talk about uh, how warm it's going to be elsewhere around the KSAT 12 viewing area and of course a chance for some isolated storms tomorrow night as well. So a lot to unpack in the forecast. I'll have a look ahead in a bit. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters called out to a house fire early this morning on the city's east side. So this was the scene at the intersection of South Cherry Street in Montana. It's just east of the Alamo Dome. Firefighters on the scene telling us when they arrived, they found the home filled with flames. They found the structure was actually abandoned. Firefighters fighting those flames. They were able to keep the fire from spreading to surrounding homes. Now we are told that home is a complete loss right now, though. Arson investigators are working trying to figure out what exactly happened. Well, earlier we saw all those volunteers gathered and they're all coming together to help out the Salvation Army to better their emergency shelter. That's right. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. So Jonathan, how's it looking out there? It's looking like it's going to be a very busy and uh, sweaty day for these volunteers. But let me tell you, I know they're excited. They're here with their families. Over 100 volunteers ready to give the Salvation uh, Army's family emergency shelter a little facelift. So let's take a look inside. They just wrapped up a series of speeches, a welcoming speech, if you will. Here they are separating into different groups, different teams. They're going to be taking on different tasks. Some folks are going to be painting. Others are going to be spreading and laying out mulch and uh, just a number of different things. Let's see if we can speak with some of the people here and they can share a little bit of how they feel participating. Let's head on over here and sneak. I'm going to catch you off guard. Ma'am, you're a volunteer. How does it feel to be here at Salvation Army participating today? It feels really good. It's really exciting to give back. This is our first big event since COVID. So to be here with all my coworkers and to be helping the community in this way has been really nice. So I know you guys do this twice a year at different uh, community organizations. The Salvation Army being such a, a staple in the community, staple in, across the country. Uh, how important is it that uh, the Salvation Army keeps up with just um, the, their, their luck for, for the people they house? Yeah, we just heard the major talking a second ago about some of their needs here and the, all the families that they're helping. And it really encourages us to want to paint the playground and to do all the mulching and all the things that they need to be done. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it, folks. These volunteers are right now teaming up into different groups. Like I mentioned, each group will be taking on a different task, and that is how their day is going to be looking. We're going to continue to hang out with these volunteers and bring you the latest on their efforts in the next half hour. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. In your morning headlines, a judge in the Ghislaine Maxwell's case has denied a motion to have her sex trafficking convictions dropped. So the ruling was handed down yesterday. Former partner of the late disgraced New York financier Jeffrey Epstein was found guilty in December on five federal charges, including sex trafficking a minor. The judge, however, did grant a motion regarding the three conspiracy counts being repetitive and will now impose punishment on three of the five charges. Right now, Alabama authorities are actually searching for a missing corrections officer and a murder suspect that the corrections officer was transporting to court. The Lauderdale County Sheriff's Office says the assistant director of corrections, Vicki White, she was supposed to take Casey White from a detention center Friday morning, but the two never actually made it to the courthouse. It's important to note these two are not related. Now, the disappearance was not noticed until hours later. The vehicle they were in, it was actually found in a shopping center parking lot. Casey White now was being held on capital murder charges. A Nebraska basketball coach is being credited for saving a student's life, and it was all caught on camera. The high school coach and teacher jumped into action without hesitating. Just look at that. He was monitoring the lunchroom when a freshman began to choke. As seen right here on the security video, the coach reacted quickly, was able to successfully, successfully perform the Heimlich maneuver. The student made a full recovery, and the school's principal is calling the coach a true hero. That is amazing. It's incredible. I think it was uh, Papillion La Vista Community Schools. Wow. That's a, wow. Fantastic. All right, time now, just about 9.07, 72 degrees out. What's going on with the Cowboys? Ah, uh, they're shaking hands and making deals, Sarah. Okay, no, they okay. uh, they had a lot going on at the draft. Remember, they got a lot of holes to fill. They got rid of Amari Cooper. He's now on the Browns. So find out who the Cowboys have added to the team after rounds two and three.
But first, a planetary conjunction. Junction, junction. What's your function? Well done. All right, this conjunction <laughs> has some people seeing planets about to collide. We'll explain. Oh. I don't think they're physically colliding. We'll see. See, look at that tease, though. <laughs> Time now, 907, 72 degrees out. What does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Some stargazers had the chance to experience a big celestial event this morning if they could see it. The big key word is... The big key is the word, though, because it involved Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter and Venus had a planetary conjunction in which they appear to nearly collide. They don't. The two <laughs> shining dots in the sky merge, ending in a very bright, spectacular glow. The proxim proximity is just an optical illusion, however, occurring only because Earth, Venus, and Jupiter are happening to align. This mm -hmm. will be happening again tomorrow, but the positions of the planets will be reversed. But Sarah, you're saying cannot see it here because of all the cloud coverage. Yeah, that's exactly right. Bummer. I know, I know. And there are areas of mist and drizzle out there too to boot. So it's just not a beautiful morning at Blah. all. Uh, in fact, Adam Kasky, he's doing Saturday things. He's out smoking a brisket, nice. of course. And he said, yeah, it's a little damp out there. You can see some of the, the dampness on the concrete there, but the temperature's good. So yes, let's make the most of this morning out there. It is muggy, 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 and a little damp in spots. Although we are seeing visibility improve for many areas around San Antonio. Earlier, visibility was down to three miles. Now it's up to eight, but we're still reporting some light mist and drizzle at the airport. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. Again, Drizzle and mist hard to see on the radar, so we have to look at the visibility in order to see where uh, the most drizzle and mist is occurring. And Castroville visibility is less than two miles, so quite a bit of mist out there to the west. Visibility down to five miles at Port Say, down to seven at Bernie Stage Airfield, down to six in New Braunfels, and down to four in Hondo. A wider view here, visibility down to seven miles in Uvalde, and again, the humidity is is very high. Not only can you see it, you can feel it, and it's at the top of our humidity scale. It's oppressively humid, but you look just up to the north and you can see how dry it is in Abilene. Dew points are only in the 30s. There is a cool front to our north that is sparking off some some very light rain showers up along that front. And so through about lunch, we're going to have a chance for some very light rain showers. Again, it shouldn't ruin your weekend plans. It's just going to be a bit of a nuisance. Much of the healthy rain, though, is up near the center of low pressure across parts of the mid West. So let me take you through the future cast here. We are going to see some of those isolated light rain showers through about 1 p.m. And then as we head into the afternoon, skies are actually going to clear somewhat and it should warm up very quickly as soon as we see sunshine. Highs will be in the mid to upper 80s. Then as we head into the evening hours, this front is going to stall across the hill country and it could end up sparking some showers and storms across the hill country, some of which could could be on the stronger side. But again, notice the placement of this rain doesn't look like a very good bet in San Antonio uh, later tonight, unless this front can make it a little further south and stall there. But we'll be keeping an eye on things for you. Chance for rain tonight, only about 20%. Let's take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Some mist and drizzle through early this morning. And then as we head into the afternoon, we're still going to see a few showers right around lunch, very light rain showers, and then into the afternoon, and we'll see some sun and temperatures will warm up. Southeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Afternoon high temperature in the mid to upper 80s, so it's going to be warm. It's going to be humid. That humidity isn't going anywhere. And then as we head late into tonight after 9 p.m., that's when those storms could be possible across the hill country. We'll be watching that carefully. Forecast highs today. Average high is about 83, so we're going to be a little bit warmer than that. As I mentioned, we will see sun this afternoon, so it's going to get warm. Uh, 88 in San Antonio, 87 in Converse, 91 in Poteet, 90 in Divine. If you're going out to uh, uh, to Holotus today. It'll be in the mid 80s, 84 in Comfort, 84 in Kerrville, and 85 in Canyon Lake. We are going to see a slightly better chance for rain Sunday night. Chance is only 30%, but a few storms out to the west could make it to San Antonio Sunday night. Again, we'll be keeping an eye on things for you, but really no 
healthy rain in our forecast over the next several days. Instead, it's going to be more of the same heat and humidity in the week ahead with highs near 90 degrees. Hey, coming up, I'll show you that pollen count today. It's a bit of a doozy. There's a little bit. It's a bit busy. You don't have to show count. it. You don't have to show <laughs> it. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> Sarah, Thank, Thank you, Sarah. You, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. 9 15, 72 degrees out. Well, still ahead, it's not Coachella, but it's drawing hundreds and hundreds of music fans to Indio, California. Details on who is performing at this year's Stagecoach Country Music Festival. All right, so here we go. We are in the midst of the NFL draft, an exciting night one and night two. So, what does night three have to offer? We're going to break down some of the top tier Houston and Dallas picks. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, three, seven, five, fireball one, daily four, eight, seven, seven, four, fireball two. We are cash five, 14, 20, 21, 27, 29. And here we go. Mega millions. Do we know what it's at? It's not very high. It's under 20. Under 20 million. Yeah. You know, I would gladly take 20 million. But here are your numbers 9, 11, 34, 49, 66. Big number 15. Mega Plier 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Pro Football Coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. Congratulations to everyone who has gotten drafted. And that includes two high school. San Antonio High School local. So former Judson and fighting Texas Aggie defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal, now officially a Pittsburgh Steeler. The Steelers using the 84th pick in the NFL draft last night, picking DeMarvin, who decided to stay in San Antonio, share the moment with the people who are most important to him. Leal started 12 games his junior season at AM, finishing with eight sacks and 12 tackles for a loss. According to the Steelers website, Leal says he was aware the Steelers had interest in him after an interaction with the defensive line coach for the Steelers, Coach Carl Dunbar, during the pre-draft process. The Steelers defensive coordinator commenting, saying, Saying, Leal is versatile. He's able to play multiple positions along the defensive line. Another possibility for Leal going last night was a number 56 pick for the Cowboys, but Dallas passed on that opportunity. As for being a Steeler, DeMarvin Leal commenting last night, he is genuinely excited to be part of Pittsburgh's football team. So, speaking of the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas continuing their draft with the 56th pick in the second round. They picked up linebacker Sam Williams at Ole Miss. Then in the third round, picked up South Alabama wide receiver Jalen Tolbert. Remember, Amari Cooper is now on the Cleveland Browns. So, Tolbert, the new Dallas Cowboy, he was the Sunbelt Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Before resuming the draft, the Cowboys introduced their first pick from Thursday night. They selected offensive lineman Tyler Smith. He was caught arriving at the Star Complex in Frisco. So, what does Smith, the first-round pick, have to say about all those people who were talking smack about him being drafted too high? Everybody has an opinion. It's like, you know, like... Everybody has one. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> and, you know, you never want somebody else's opinion of you to become the reality. And I simply won't let it. So, you know, I understand criticism. You know, I take it well, but I'm always working to get better at the same time. You got to manifest greatness. Good luck. So, on the other Texas pro team, Houston Texans, they had a huge draft. So, last night, second round, they had 37 overall, and they used it to bolster the defensive secondary. Jalen Pitter, a safety out of Baylor, 5'11", can cover the slot, and according to his scouting report, also good at the blitz. So, next up, the Texans traded up to number 44 with Cleveland for their 68, 108, and 124 picks, using it to select John Mechie out of Alabama. Wide receiver, he had over 1,200 yards receiving eight touchdowns last year, but he did tear his ACL in the SEC championship game. But with their second pick in the third round, Texans went back to defense, drafting Alabama linebacker Christian Harris. Before the draft continued, the Houston Texans introduced their first two picks. Cornerback Derek Stingley Jr. selected the third overall out of LSU, and Aggie offensive lineman and Houston resident Kenyon Green with 15th overall. I got the uh, A32 <laughs> area code. I already know, yeah, you know, it was um, the Texans. And I um, sat there, you know, I was just, I was shocked. I was just truly just thanking God, you know, for this opportunity, you know, being here, being able to, you know, uh, stay home and, um, and play for my city. 
All right, so we mentioned DeMarvin Leal, but we also want to give a congratulations to JT Woods. He is a Steel High School alum, a former Baylor Bear safety, also drafted last night by the LA Chargers. Third round of the draft, Woods burst onto the scene the past year with six interceptions tied for the most in the FBS. He did have a pick in that Big 12 championship game for Baylor, came up with two more interceptions in the Sugar Bowl game helping Baylor beat Ole Miss. And it's crazy because we talk about Houston and they went through this whole, you know, reformation process. They look like they have a whole new team with a lot of young stars. Getting formation. There you go. All right, 923, 72 degrees out. All right, straight ahead, a big change coming the late night talk show lineup. James Gordon is leaving his show. We'll tell you when. Welcome back. James Corden, the star of the Late Late Show, says he will be leaving his own program next year. He's been on the show since 2015. So during the monologue earlier this week, Corden addressed his upcoming departure, saying he feels 2023 will be the right time for him to move on to other projects. He also said his final season will, quote, go out with a bang. Besides his late night show, well, Corden, known for his crosswalk, the musical, and carpool karaoke, both of which generated billions of views on YouTube. And check this out. It's like a stampede. Oh. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Festival goers are to Doesn't California like a... Stagecoach Country Music Festival. One even brought a custom convertible cool. with longhorns attached to it. That's Thomas. So Thomas Rhett, Carrie Underwood, and Luke Combs, some of the country music artists expected to perform. The festival started yesterday. The RVs are in, the flags are up, and thousands of people are rolling into the desert to see their favorite singers. So there's a lot of excitement considering the festival didn't happen two years ago. All right, time now, 927, 72 degrees out. Well, there's another reason to love oysters for more than just great seafood meals. Later on GMSA, how oyster shells are becoming an intricate part of rebuilding and maintaining a viable reef along the Texas coastline. But first, San Antonio police trying to find the crime scene where a man was shot earlier this morning. We have the latest on the investigation. That's next. Good morning. Welcome back and a happy Saturday, 931 this morning, April 30th. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing okay. Doing okay, making doing, it through? I'm making it through. I'm just so fed up with this humidity. It woke me up this morning. I woke I up. had like, enough. I woke up and it was like, oh, I can feel the humidity just like seeping. The weighted through. blanket. Yes. Yeah. Ugh. And a lot of people are experiencing some mist and some drizzle out there right now, too. I want to show you today's pollen count. Uh, now, th there are four allergens out there. Molds and oak are actually down a little bit from yesterday, but they're still moderate. Pecan and grass are low. But I think with the mist and drizzle out there right now, the high humidity, that mold number may go up in the coming days. So just be prepared for that. Here's a look out at the airport. We're still seeing some light mist and drizzle at the airport right now. It's 72 degrees, but visibility is improving at the airport. The humidity is the big weather story for us today. It's so high, it's producing some drizzle and some mist out there right now. Visibility is down to three miles in Castroville, down to five in Hondo, down to five in New Braunfels. And as we take a look at the satellite here, uh, we're socked into cloud cover in San Antonio. Look up to the north, though. There is a cold front that is pushing southward, bringing another band of light rain showers. That cold front is, uh, again, going to continue to bring us a small chance for rain through about lunch, and then into the afternoon, we'll actually see some sunshine. If you're heading out to Corneval, out into Lotus, gates at 11, cloudy humidity humid and sprinkles for the morning hours and even around lunch. But after lunch, mostly cloudy 87 uh, for the high temperature and it'll be a mild and humid night in Holotus tonight. But there is a chance for some rain both tonight and tomorrow night. It's not a great chance, but I do want to prepare you just in case it happens. So coming up, we'll take a look at that in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police say one person is dead after he was thrown from a mo motorcycle overnight. It happened early this morning around 4 o'clock near the I-35 Highway 90 interchange. SAPD says the man on the motorcycle is traveling northbound on 35, trying to take, take the ramp off to Highway 90 when he lost control of the motorcycle 
while going around a curve. So as a result, he hit a curb and was ejected. Says SAPD says the man died on scene. Police are still investigating what caused him to lose control. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a man is in serious condition after a shooting on the city's east side. This is what we know right now. Officers responded to the 500 block of West Martin Street just before 5 a.m. They responded because they got a call for help. Now we are told that the victim actually drove to that location. He told police that he was shot two times in the abdomen. Officers say he did not provide a specific location of where he was shot. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. He is expected to be questioned by detectives later this morning. Okay, so a large group of volunteers has gathered to help out the Salvation Army to fix up its emergency shelter. It is a really impressive shelter. Jonathan Cotto joining us live this morning. So Jonathan, what's going on over there? Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. It is an impressive shelter, and the work that's being done here this morning is even more impressive. I'm just uh, blown away by how effective, how organized this volunteer operation has taken place. They knew exactly where to go, what paintbrushes to pick up, what rakes to get, what wheelbarrows to get. There's a mound of mulch right on the other side of that fence, and uh, they, they just got to work right away. I'm really, really impressed on how quickly this place is already looking. But let's uh, talk with Brad. Brad, this operation is in a full effect, volunteers um, working, and this place is already starting to look really, really good. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, this is proof that there's strength in numbers. In like 30 minutes, this place has already taken shape. The, the playground looks like new. Um, the painting that the security service employees are doing over in the courtyard looks amazing. It's very artistic, very creative. I mean, we're so grateful to have everyone here. So over the next two hours, it's only going to continue you to get better it's going to look completely transformed by midday it's already looking wonderful the playground itself as you mentioned it's coming to life with that bright red the mulch is being spread um, at, at different parts of the, the playground and like you mentioned some of those benches are being brightly painted yeah. uh, brad talk to us a little bit about how important you know this may not mean a lot to us but to the children that come to the salvation come to this uh this shelter and seeing this playground just up to par it's just going to make a world of a difference isn't it absolutely i mean on a given night we have 50 to 75 kids that stay right here in our emergency family shelter and our team here they do everything they can to make this a home away from home for them a tem nice temporary home so I can't wait for them to come out and enjoy this uh, the, the kids will really enjoy this playground looks I great I can't wait either, and I wish I could see the look, the smiles that they'll have on their face. This is truly uh, a remarkable function, and I'm so happy that these volunteers were able to, to organize and be here today. Brad, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Max, Sarah, this is the work that over 100 volunteers with security services are able to do today. They do this twice a year, and they're going to be here until this playground is completely, completely facelifted, as I like to call it. Back to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, making education headlines this morning, the process to become a certified teacher here in Texas could be changing. So a state board for educator certification voted yesterday to adopt a new certification exam. The board for educator certification voting eight to one in favor of requiring a new exam that will require teachers, specifically new teachers, to now submit a 15 minute video of themselves teaching in the classroom and a report on their students' progress. In addition, teachers would have to submit answers to essay questions and provide a sample lesson plan. The state board says the goal of the new certification exam is to better prepare new teachers and to keep them in the profession. The vote for final approval is expected to happen in June. Well, Port San Antonio is one of the technology hubs here in the Alamo City. And over the last year plus, we've seen the port build a state-of-the-art facility. May 2nd is the first official concert being held at the new Tech Port Center. So that is why tomorrow morning on Lead ESA at 8 a.m., President and CEO of Port San Antonio, Jim Pershbach, joining us live. We're going to be talking about a lot. We're going to be talking about what makes this arena so special, what the city can expect, and what the future of technology here in San Antonio looks like. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading ESA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for all the answers. Well, have you ever wondered what happens to your shucked oyster shells at a restaurant? 
Traditionally, they are tossed in the trash with other table scraps, but recently conservation groups are turning that trash into treasure. Zach Lashway with our sister station KPRC in Houston explains how Galveston Bay Foundation's oyster shell recycling program is now helping local restaurants help our bay. Its water is a mix between salt and fresh. It's unusually shallow for its size. Ooh, the water is low today. And it's home to a variety of life, including oysters. Just beneath the surface. Important work to restore oyster beds in Galveston Bay is underway. Oysters are born into the water as just little microscopic larvae. So after about two weeks of life, they start to gain weight as they feed and then descend into the water column and they go in search of something hard to attach to. Haley Leha, Galveston Bay Foundation's habitat restoration manager, explains oysters prefer to cement to other shells or oysters because they are reef building organisms. Sometimes those baby oysters will grow about an inch in three months. And just to give you some context, legal size here for commercial harvesting is three inches. From served to shot. Shannon Bad is Habitat Restoration Coordinator with GBF. Each week, Bat collects oyster shells from 26 restaurants throughout the greater Houston area. Conservation and sustainability uh, is, is very important to me uh, and to our organization. At the end of the day, when I've gone to all of our restaurants for that day, I take it to what we call our curing site. And that's where we dump the shell out onto the ground and it will sit there for at least six months to get rid of all the contaminants on the shell. There are millions of oyster shells at this curing site. That's about an acre. So we're at our Red Bluff curing site. We separate it out into different piles so we know what's fresh shell and still needs to be cured or cleaned. And that shell then sits in a pile until it reaches about 18 inches. At that time, that pile is uh, essentially stopped and we move on to the next one to start a fresh pile. Are you seeing success? Is your work paying off? Definitely. We're seeing lots of success, particularly down in the West Bay part of the system. That's where it stayed a bit saltier, even with all the freshwater events coming through with Hurricane Harvey and those previous years of flooding. Um, northern parts of the bay are still suffering quite a bit. So the reason we started all this is because there is a loss of this habitat. Hurricane Ike and other subsequent storms have brought in so much sediment, it literally covered up those reefs. This is one of five sites where oyster restoration takes place. We are in Dickinson Bay. This effort is a approximately two and a half acres. I'll put him back in his new home. Once clean and cured, oyster shells are brought back to the bay where they build and restore oyster beds to strengthen oyster populations and reduce coastal erosion. In Galveston, Zach Lajway, KSAT 12 News. All right, you can check out more of our Solutionaries content right now. Go to youtube.com slash Solutionaries. You can also scan the QR code right on your screen. It'll take you right there. You'll find hours of solutions-based stories focused on delivering answers to complicated issues like police, community relations, the housing crisis, and so much more. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Time now, 942, 73 degrees out. Well, if you have a craving for French food, it might lead you to Southtown. Oh. David Elders tells us exactly where in today's Texas Eats that's coming up. All right, but first, we're headed to Kansas. Take a look at this, some destructive tornadoes leaving devastation. We're going to have the videos next. Welcome back. Terrifying images capturing a tornado touching down about 15 miles right outside of Wichita, Kansas. And it destroyed as many as 100 houses and buildings. And the severe weather now moving east to include Chicago and St. Louis. Here's the latest from Danielle Breezy. Terrifying twisters. Go to the apartment complex! Ripping into Kansas overnight. All of a sudden it sounded almost like a train. Large pieces of debris being tossed in the air at least one confirmed tornado touching down. Up to 100 reports of major damage to homes and buildings. The police chief of Andover, Kansas, telling people to steer clear of the area as down power lines lie in the streets. Areas completely obliterated. As this massive funnel cloud hovering over a road, cars pulling over to wait it out. Then moments later, it churns over a field. 
first responders and neighbors coming together in the dark, using flashlights from their phones to search for anyone who still may be trapped and salvage what they can from where their homes once stood. Many people scrambling and taking shelter in this YMCA that suffered significant damage. Cars thrown into the building, others flipped upside down. Miraculously, only three reports of injuries. It was rumbling. The door opened and I was trying to figure out why there was so much wind. I looked up and I could only see just debris flying in the distance. Yeah, that's right. That same system which brought the tornadoes across parts of Kansas is bringing a cool front, which is allowing for us to see a few light rain showers out there this morning, though it's been damp from some uh, mist and drizzle. But you know, unfortunately, this is just a nuancey kind of thing. We're really not seeing any healthy rainfall from this uh, for us. It's 72 degrees and winds are from the south at about seven miles per hour. Here's a look at the satellite radar right now you can see very clearly that we're in complete cloud cover in San Antonio but look just up to the north and what you'll see is the cool front now this cool front is likely going to stall to our north but it is providing a few light rain showers from Austin toward Blanco all the way up toward Rock Springs and through Kerrville and so through about the lunch hour we're going to have a chance for some light rain around San Antonio again it does it will not amount to much uh, and it should just be a bit of a nuisance into the afternoon. We'll actually see some sunshine and it's going to be just plain old warm and humid this afternoon. 72 at Port SA, 72 in Converse, 74 in New Braunfels, 71 Rio Medina, 72 in Hondo, it's 70 in Bandera and 71 in Kerrville. That humidity sky high, oppressively humid out there. That's why we've had the morning drizzle. That's why we've had the morning mist and uh, it just feels very humid outside, even if you're not seeing the mist and the drizzle. Visibility is down to five miles though in New Braunfels, down to five at Port SA and five in Castroville. Earlier visibility was down to three miles in San Antonio. So we're seeing some improvement there. Showing you that broader system that uh, was just talking about the tornadoes that occurred across parts of Kansas. This is where all of the healthy rain is. Of course, the intense severe weather threat. We're on the tail end of this system, so we're just getting the leftovers, right? Just some light rain showers, but mainly that Gulf of Mexico moisture is going to be with us all day long, all weekend long. Let me take you through the future cast again. Those light rain showers possible through about noon because of that front. That front is going to stall to the north. We'll see sunshine this afternoon. It's going to get warm and then later tonight as that front stalls, we could see some thunderstorms develop across the hill country and some of these could be on the stronger severe side with some quarter sized hail and gusty winds. But notice San Antonio could very well miss out on the rain completely tonight, so the chance for rain is only about 20%. Then tomorrow morning, we'll have more morning mist and drizzle, and then uh, tomorrow in the evening hours, we're going to watch some storms out west that may develop along a dry line. These storms may hold on to make it to San Antonio, but they also may not. So all in all, the rain chance this weekend it's not great, but there are a couple of windows where we could see some showers and some storms. So looking at your case at 12 hour forecast, some drizzle and some mist this morning. We'll start to see skies clear around uh, the early afternoon uh, as uh, that front stalls to our north. So it's still going to be warm in San Antonio. We're still going to get up to about 90 degrees for the high temperature. Mid to upper 80s is a safe bet. And then late tonight, It'll be mild in San Antonio, but we're going to be looking closely at those uh, potential showers and storms across the hill country. Meteorologist Katie Blake will be here to keep tabs on that. Morning sprinkles tomorrow, as I mentioned, and then watching that 30% chance for storms to make it to San Antonio Sunday night into Monday. And looking ahead to the week, no big rainmakers for us. We'll just be playing chicken with the rain. Uh, isolated showers, storm possible Wednesday and Thursday. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now just about 951, 73 degrees out. We have a preview of today's episode of Texas Eats. That's next. David Elder sampling some French cuisine in the south part of San Antonio. All right. What a life, <laughs> right? All right. So it's happening in today's Texas Eats coming up at 10 a.m. Here's a preview. Miles and his mom are both San Antonio restaurant icons, and you gotta come eat here to get a little bit of history of the Alamo City. 
Now, how long has the restaurant been open? We've owned it uh, for 12 years now. Wow. And um, we are the longest standing French restaurant in town, actually. That's uh, incredible. And we were uh, never, we weren't really restaurant tours in the beginning, but we just decided to fall in love with food and get into the restaurant business. And this is the way to do it. When you have food like this, it's pretty easy to fall in love with it. The mussels are incredible. I highly recommend either starting out with them or making your main entree. I mean, if you don't share them, it's enough to fill you up. Oh, for sure. I want to know what's going on inside this crepe right here. I mean, it looks fun, it looks compact, but it looks like it's got a lot going on on the inside. So we have a uh, jumbo lump crab um, and mushroom crepe. And um, it is just one of the most popular lunch items and as well as a starter at, in, the, in the evening. You gotta jump in here. For sure. Get a little slice of this. I'm excited. And everything just smells incredible. Oh wow. I'm in. Yes. <laughs> Time now, 9.55, 73 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Over 100 volunteers participating in a volunteer extravaganza here at the Salvation Army. With me is one of those volunteers. Good morning, AJ. Good morning. How good does it feel to be able to be a part of this service? It's amazing. Uh, one word, amazing. Uh, give, get to give back to the community and then hopefully it encourages others to also give back. So uh, I love the experience. I love the, uh, the rewarding feeling it gives me and yeah, can't beat it. Well, thank you so much, and there you have it, folks. They'll continue to be here for the remainder of the day until this playground is completely turned around. This is part of uh, an event they do twice a year. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And they may have to deal with some very light rain periodically through about noon. Palm count today, molds and oak are moderate, pecan and grass are low. Here's a look at the radar right now. You can see that there's a thin line of very light rain showers from Canyon Lake, from the west part of Canyon Lake, all the way through Bernie and Kerrville. That's going to bring a brief uh, opportunity for light rain through about noon. And then as we head into the afternoon, we'll be looking at clearing skies warm this afternoon with a in the mid to upper 80s and then tonight we'll be watching especially up across the hill country for some isolated storms more morning sprinkles and drizzle tomorrow morning it's going to be near 90 and then looking out west sunday night into monday because a few storms could make it to san antonio by monday morning keyword there could make it and we're going to be watching the radar carefully the chance for rain is only about 30 percent Hey, if you want to brave the humidity, Corning Ball is happening in Holotus this mm -hmm. weekend. Gates open today and tomorrow at 11 a.m. All right, we also have the NFL draft continuing tonight. We know there's a few UTSA players still on the board, so we're rooting for them, Sincere and Tariq. And, of course, the Gunslingers happening tonight. I think it's free, but for now, Texas Eats starts right now.